The last couple of times I've done a video on a laser cut pie case, people have asked me to put together an in-depth tutorial on how to design them. So in this video, we'll be using an open source software package called Inkscape to do just that. Inkscape is a vector-based graphics editor that's available for Windows, Mac and Linux, so you can even run it on your Raspberry Pi. If you don't have it installed already, I'll leave a link to it in the video description. I'm not going to go into how to use Inkscape in too much detail in this tutorial. The point of the tutorial is to focus mainly on the design of the case. There are loads of guides and tutorials on how to do the basics in Inkscape, so it'll be good for you to be somewhat familiar with it to start. I will obviously go over the settings and tools that we're going to need to design the case. When you first open Inkscape up, you should see a screen like this with a blank page in the middle. There are a couple of things we need to do to make sure we're working with the right settings before we start working on the case. Head over to File and then click on Document Properties. In this window, let's change our paper size to A0, so that we've got a larger white sheet to work on. Also change it to landscape so that it fits our screen orientation, and then make sure that the page and display units are both set to millimeters. It's important that you're working with the correct set of units to start with, so that your case design actually fits your pie in the end. You can then close the window and zoom into the page a bit by holding down Ctrl and using your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Now we're ready to start designing the case. We're going to be making a basic rectangular case, so that's got six faces or panels that we'll need to design. The bottom, the four sides, and then the top. Inkscape is a 2D software package, so we're going to be drawing our case as a flat design that we'll then cut from 3mm plywood or MDF. The pieces will then glue together to form a 3D case. It might take you a while to wrap your head around working with and visualizing 3D objects in only two dimensions, but you'll eventually get used to it. Let's start with the bottom and we'll make this the size that we want the inside of our case to be. So we'll use this tool to draw a rectangle on our sheet. We can then set the width and height of the rectangle in millimeters at the top. I'm going to start by making it 100 millimeters wide and 80 millimeters high. K40 Whisperer and Laser Gerbil, which are the software packages I use to control my laser CNC machines, both recognize a red outline as the cutting path. So let's get rid of the black accent color in the rectangle by turning off the fill. We'll then set the stroke color to red and change the stroke style to 0.3 millimeters. You don't have to use 0.3 millimeters. I've just found that this works well to provide enough clearance between the parts once they're cut so that they fit together well. Once that is set, Inkscape will draw all subsequent shapes in the same style. Now let's make up our four sides. Let's start by copying the rectangle. We'll drag it to snap to the corner to line up with the base, and then use the arrow keys to move it so that there's some clearance between the two. For our sides, we need to make them high enough so that there's enough space within the case to fit our part. So let's make them 45 millimeters high as a start. I'm going to move it back down to the bottom piece again and keep it aligned. Let's now create an exact copy of the side we've just created for the other side of the case. So now we've got the bottom and two sides, so let's make the next two sides. We'll again make a copy of the bottom and this time drag it to the right. And we'll again set the height to 45 millimeters, although this time we're setting the width because the side has turned 90 degrees. Now we can make a copy for the last remaining side panel. So now we have our bottom, our two long sides, and our two shorter sides. So all that's remaining is the top. For the top, I'm going to just make a copy of the bottom and put it above the side panel. This just helps me keep track of which of the larger ones is the top and which is the bottom. Now we have a basic box, but we need to add some cutouts for our pie standoffs and ports. So next, let's draw an outline of our Raspberry Pi. I usually use a dimension drawing of the Raspberry Pi like this to help out along the way. So from the drawing, our Pi is 56mm by 85mm. We then need to add some holes for the standoffs, and these need to align with the holes on the Raspberry Pi. To do this, let's create a circle that's a little larger than 3mm in diameter. This is a bit more than what's needed for the Pi standoffs, but gives you some clearance for adjustments.
Let's create three copies of the circle so that we've got four in total. Then we select the four circles and use the align tool to align them vertically and horizontally so that we know they're all starting in the same position. Next we can use the move tool to move each circle the exact distance we need, following the layout on the Raspberry Pi's dimension drawing. So let's move two of the circles across 58 millimeters. And then move two down 49 millimeters. So we've now got four circles laid out in a rectangle, matching the whole pattern on the Raspberry Pi. Next, head over to Object and click on Group, or you can press Ctrl G on your keyboard. This will group the circles into a single movable object. Now we need to position them in our Pi's outline. Drag the bottom left circle to the corner so that the center line of the circle snaps to the corner. We can then use the Move tool to move it 3.5 millimeters to the correct position on our Pi. We know the holes are centered with the Pi, so we can just use the Alignment tool to center them, making sure that we've selected our Pi's shape first. Now let's group the Pi and holes in the same way we did previously. Looking at the case now, it looks like we've made it a bit wider than it needs to be. So let's adjust our base to be 70mm instead of 80mm. We then need to do the same with the two shorter sides, as well as the top panel. Now let's position our power within the case. We've got ports on the right edge and the bottom edge, so these need to be close to the sides. I found that it works quite well to have the power spaced 1mm away from each of these sides. Next let's create the cutouts we need for the ports. Let's start with the Ethernet and USB ports on the short side. These you'll need to measure on your Raspberry Pi and then add some clearance to them, or you can use the sizes that I'm going to be using here. We'll create a 16 by 17.5 mm box for the Ethernet port, and then two 18 by 16.5 mm boxes for the USB ports. To get them in the right spots, let's start by dragging them to the edge of the side panel so that their center line is aligned with the edge of the panel. We can then work with the dimensions shown on the drawing, adding 1mm to each dimension for the 1mm we've left between the edge of the pie and the edge of the case. Now we need to get their height correct, so let's align all of the bottom edges together. Then let's draw a rectangle to help guide the bottom edges of the port cutouts. We'll make this 10mm to allow for the 3mm plywood thickness, the 6mm brass standoff height, and then the 1mm pi PCB height with the little clearance. We can then use our arrow keys to move the ports horizontally until they touch the guide. Lastly, I'm going to move the Ethernet port down by 1.5mm, as it sits a bit lower than the USB ports. Next let's add the cutouts for the ports on the long side. We need a rectangular cutout for the USB-C port, two for the HDMI ports, and then a circle for the audio port. These then also need to be resized after taking measurements and adding some clearance. I'm allowing 12.3 by 6.3 millimeters for the USB-C port, then 10.3 by 6.3 millimeters for the HDMI ports, and eight millimeters in diameter for the audio port. We can round the cutout slightly at the corner by dragging the circle. Now let's align them in the same way we did with the front ports. Sensor them with the edge of the pie, then move them by the dimension shown on the diagram. Since these are shown relative to each other, and not relative to the edge of the pie as with the other ports, I'm going to align them each with the cutout that has just been moved, and then move them on from the new position.
We can then align the bottom edges with each other and then use the vertical arrow keys to move them back into their panel. We'll then draw a rectangle like we did with the front ports, making it 10mm high. And then use the vertical arrows on our keyboard to align the ports with the edge of the rectangle. I'm then going to move the three rectangular ports down by 1mm, and the circular audio port down by half a millimetre. This is to align the cutouts better with the actual ports, as I've left some clearance around them. Because we're making a wooden case, we need to add a fan onto it to cool the pie. So we need somewhere for the air to leave the case. So let's create some vents on the opposite side panel. To do that, we'll start with a rectangle. Let's make it 3 by 22 millimeters. We can then round the ends and rotate it by 30 degrees, so that it's at a bit of an angle. We can then create a number of copies of it, align them with each other horizontally, and then space them out equally. You can add or remove vents or space them differently if you'd prefer. You just need to have enough of them to allow the air coming in from the fan to escape with as little restriction as possible. Now we just need to create the cutout for the fan. You can take measurements from a 40mm fan or use a drawing, as they're generally all made to the same dimensions. Let's start with a 38mm hole for the body of the fan and then add four 3.2mm holes to mount the fan. We'll position these in the same way we did for the pie's mounting holes, spacing them in a square 32mm apart. We can then group them and align them with the fan hole, and then align the whole group with the center line of our case's lid. Now we've got the majority of the case designed, but we need to make them interlock so that it's easier to assemble and to strengthen the joints. We do this with tabs along the edges. Let's start with the bottom. We're going to make the tab 3mm wide, as that's the thickness of our plywood. The length doesn't matter so much, so you can make smaller tabs if you'd prefer. I'm going to make a single tab a little over half of the total length, so let's make it 55mm. To position it correctly, let's snap it to the corner of the base and then align it with the center of our panel. We can then copy it to the opposite side as well. I'm going to create a third copy to use for the interfacing piece later. Once the tabs are in the right spot, we need to merge them with the base so that they form one continuous line for the laser to cut. To do this, we first select the base rectangle and then the tab. We then click on Path and select Union. You can also use Ctrl and Plus as a shortcut. You'll then see the tab merge with the base to create a single continuous outline. If you do this and you still see two shapes, then the piece you're trying to add wasn't overlapping with the base. So you'll need to extend it a little and then try again. The outside in this case is the important dimension so we can extend it back into the base before trying again. Now let's do the same for the shorter side, this time with a 45mm tab. With the bottom done, we now need to create the spaces in the side panels for these tabs to fit into. We do this by following the same process we did on the bottom, but now positioning tabs within the side panel so that we're removing material from it. Now instead of using path and union, we want to subtract the material, so we'll use path and then difference. You can also do this by pressing Ctrl and the minus sign on the keyboard. We've now got a side panel that interlocks with the bottom panel. We need to repeat the same process for the long side, matching the 55mm length of the tab we made in the bottom panel. We're almost done, but we now have to create the interface between the two side panels. 
so we need to add a tab to one and remove material from the other. Let's add a tab to the shorter side. We'll make these 25 millimeters long. We can then remove material from the longer side. There's one thing to look out for here, and that's that we've made all of the sides the same length as the base. So we need the tab cut out to be in this position, but there actually isn't any material on the long side here to cut away from. So we need to extend the longer sides by 3mm each, before we can cut away from them for the tabs to interlock into. We do this by just adding tabs that are the same height as the side is. We can then reposition the tab cutouts and remove them from our longer side. Taking a look at the whole design, we've only designed three of the sides. Fortunately, our design is symmetrical, so we can just swap out the other three sides with the ones we've just modified. Make a copy of each of them and then align them with the sides you're going to delete, and then delete the original. We also need to remove the outline of the pie, as we don't want to cut this. We just needed it to position the mounting holes. And that's it, our case is now complete and ready to be cut out. I'm going to go ahead and make a few more tweaks to it first, like adding some rounded extensions for feet to lift it off the desk, a cutout on the back to remove the micro SD card, and some additional vents on the top. You can also add vector-based pattern cutouts to the sides, for a bit more design flair if you'd like. Once you're done, you can move the panels around to make better use of your sheet of wood. It also helps to resize your page to the contents, so that the page size is the same as your design size. Now let's get the case components cut out and see how it looks. I'm going to cut these on the Atomstack X20 Pro. This is a fantastic machine for cutting plywood and MDF sheets. The 20 watt diode laser is much faster than 5 and 10 watt diodes, and the air assist keeps the cuts really clean. I've glued the basic one together and my pie fits into it perfectly. So now you know how to design and build your own pie cases using free software and a laser cutter. I'll leave a link in the video description to download the design we've just drawn if you'd like to try laser cutting your own case. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Please leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.